So there's a little roller up along first. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight and the Mets win. Moki, I, I can watch that a thousand times. I'm sure you can too. I mean, two outs, two strikes, one strike and the Mets lose the World Series and Moki saves the day. I, I mean, that, think about that. Bottom of the inning, World Series, they're losing three games to two. Mookie's got the fate of the world in his hands, right? A 10-pitch at bat, we watched it. He fouled off every tough pitch. Stayed alive, stayed alive. Hit that ground ball. I asked him, if Buckner caught it, were you going to beat him to the bag? He said, absolutely. <laughs> Mookie, come on up. Thank you so much. Mookie Wilson. Oh, uh, thank you very much. I'm going to try to get all the pleasantries out of the way. Uh, first, I'd like to thank New York State um, Hall, of Fame, Hall of Fame Committee for even nominating me. Thank you for voting for me, and thank you for selecting me to be a member of this great, great organization. I'm very, very proud, and I do, again, thank you very much for even considering this young man from South Carolina. So thank you very much again. All right. And usually, uh, I don't do many acceptance speeches, because I'm not accepted to do a whole lot of things anyway. Uh, but I did do my first acceptance speech was when I said I do to my wife, Rosa, who's here with me tonight. And, you know. Yep, 43 years she's put up with me, 43 years. And it's been a, a, a great ride. Um, it's very difficult to justify why you have been nominated to be part of any Hall of Fame. It's tough to justify that because people don't look at themselves objectively. You know, um, it takes people outside to look at you to see what you can contribute. And I do agree with Cleon that baseball is more than a game. It's a way of life. It's one of the best teachers of life I've ever been around. And to give an example, uh, my father was a great baseball man. I mean, he absolutely loved baseball. He was a seventh grade uh, man, never got further than seventh grade, but he's the smartest man I've ever, ever been around. And he had this way of teaching us the values of life, life lessons. And the one value um, he taught us, I grew up in, a, first of all, I grew up in a very large family, family of 12, 12 kids, seven boys, five girls. And um, it was rough. It was rough. But we always found time to entertain ourselves, not at, you know, um, Orlando, you know, Disney World or, the, you know, Six Flags and all that. We could not afford those things, so we played baseball. And my father would get us in the backyard and we would play baseball. He had this one little catcher's mitt. It's the only glove we had in the whole house. Can you imagine seven boys sharing one glove? That's kind of rough to do. But anyway, and the girls will always try to intrude on our time with our dad. We didn't take that too kindly, so it's just one particular day we were in the yard playing, and the boys would, you know, we were throwing, we was laughing. I had, they were very, all my brothers were very good players. And my sisters wanted to play, so my dad said, you know, okay, come on to play. And, then, and we didn't take too kindly to that. So he said, we're going to play a little game. You know, I'm going to catch and everyone throw the ball to me. So we said, okay, it's going to be a piece of cake. So we would throw, and the mitt he was using had this web at the top, and we threw the ball, he would hit the web, you could barely hear it, like a muffled sound. <laughs> okay, we throw it, grunting, just throw it. And my sister would get the ball, and she would throw it and hit the middle, go pow! <laughs> you know, so we said, wait a minute, this ain't right. So we get, and we throw harder and harder and harder. The harder we threw it, the softer he would catch it. This, this. And my sister would throw the ball, she would grunt, and go, Oh man, what is going on here? We look at each other, that can't be right. And he would just be laughing and laughing. And we took us years to figure out what he was doing. All right. And it taught us that no matter who you are, no one on a team, no one is better than the other person. Because if you lose, everybody loses. If you win, everybody wins. And that's one of the best lessons that I've learned 
over the years. And that lesson has carried me through high school, through college, through the minor leagues, and eventually here in New York where I have continued that same process of trying to play the game and understand who I am, who my players are, who the fans are, and how we all come together to be successful in New York. And that is what I have learned in baseball, and I try to continue to teach that. Even when I'm ministering, try to use baseball stories, because baseball has some fascinating stories, you know. And I'm going to share that story with you now, and I promise you it will not take 10 minutes. <laughs> I promise you that. The one thing that I've learned through baseball and the ministry is that it's not the destination that defines us. It's the journey. It's the journey. It's not the destination. You see, in baseball, we have a tendency to look beyond getting to the point where we want to be. It's all about the results. If I hit 300, I don't care how I did it as long as I hit 300. If we won, I don't care how I won as long as we win. See, we don't worry about the process of getting there. So whatever goal you have, do not forget or do not ignore or do not dismiss the journey to get in there because along the journey, along the way to your success, you're going to meet people that's going to impact you, that's going to inspire you, that's going to make your lives better. And along that journey, people are going to inspire you and help you to elevate your thoughts and your desires and your successes. And this is what you want. And in the end, all of that is how you develop your character. This is what makes you the journey, not the destination. Because the destination is there. Eventually, it will be there. And this is what you have, I have learned over baseball. And now, being inducted into the New York State Hall of Fame is not the destination. It's just a part of the journey that's inspired me to keep on doing what I'm doing. I have to keep on putting people first and not say, Mooka Wilson, you, all of that. You are not the first person. You're not going to be the last. I made many mistakes. I'm going to make a few more. But it's not going to define me. You know, because there are a lot of things that I have to do along the way. So I want to make sure that we understand all of that. And the last thing that I want to say is that you've seen me play. And the one thing you know, <laughs> I wasn't perfect. And I've learned that you don't have to be perfect to be successful, but you have to be devoted. You have to be true to yourself. If you do those things, everything else falls into place. All right? Now, I'm going to close with this last moment, this last thing. I'm going to answer the question that everyone has been asking me. Well, two questions. One has been answered already. First of all, would I have beaten Butler to the base if he had caught the ball? Yes, I would have beaten him to the base. <laughs> all right? And the second question, and I'm going to answer this one as truthfully as I can. People ask you, when you hit the ball, and it went between Bill Buckner's legs. What did you say? What were you thinking? Well, first of all, Bernie would tell you this left-handers dream is that ball low, middle end. Boy, that's a left-handers hitter's dream. And I rolled it, man. <laughs> I swung it and I rolled it and I said that word I should never say and I won't say it again. <laughs> Bernie know that word. I know you know that word, Bernie. All right. <laughs> Clint, yeah, you know that word, Cleon. Don't you? That word you say, you yeah, don't say it again. I said the word when I swung at it and it hit the bat. But I had to run, so I'm running for my life. The ball's hit so slow, it must have took 10 minutes for that ball to get there. When it finally got there and went between his legs, I said that word again. <laughs> hey, day in the morning. Well, <laughs> Man, but I tell you what, and it felt good. It felt good. But I tell you, New York has embraced me, a Southern boy, and they have really adopted me as one of their own. That's why I'm honored to be here tonight. I'm honored that you have selected me to be a member of New York State Baseball Hall of Fame. And you have more than baseball. You have people who committed their lives to the game of baseball and to children and to their communities, and I think that is great. And I will agree with this. People that enter the Hall of Fame should not be judged by these stats. They should be judged by what their contribution to the game, to their community, and to their families. Thank you very much, and God bless you.